Hey Mailinians, Teacher Darwin here. Today's video tutorial is all about the topic, Solving Problems Involving Patterns of Non-Mendelian Inheritance. This video lesson is based on your activity sheet, quarter 1, week 4, and your learner's material. So, it is good to have your books open on pages 28 to 42 and to have your activity sheets beside you. A friendly reminder, do not write anything on your book on your activity sheet. So just sit back, watch, learn, and let the knowledge flow. The learning targets for this video tutorial is to explain the different patterns of non-Mendelian inheritance. To check if you have an advanced knowledge on this topic, let us have some warm-up questions. For question number one, what is the meaning of a homozygous genotype? Your timer starts now. Time's up. That was fascinating. Homozygous genotypes are composed of genes of the same appearances. For example, two dominant genes like two capital letter T's are read as homozygous tall. For question number two, what is the meaning of a heterozygous genotype? Your timer starts now. Time's up. That was wonderful. Homozygous genotypes are genes having different appearances. For example, a dominant gene like T is paired by a recessive gene like small t. If a capital T and a small t is joined together, you will read that as heterozygous tall. In lesson number 3, we have discussed about Punnett square and how to use it. But now, in week number 4, let us discuss it in a more specific manner. For step number 1, you need to analyze and read the problem. Let us have this problem. Harit and Nana got married. Harit is a white-coated leonin with a homozygous genotype of two small letter T's. Then, Nana is a pink-coated leonin with a heterozygous genotype of a capital letter T and a small letter T. What will be their offsprings? In order to identify their offsprings, especially their genotypes, we must know who are the parents. And the parents are Harit and Dana. The phenotype of Harit is he is a white-coated leonin. The phenotype of Nana is she is a pink-coated leonin. Then, we will go now to step number two to identify the genotypes of the parents. What is the genotype of A? White coated leonin. That's right, it is a homozygous to small letter T's. Then, what is the genotype for a pink coated leonin? Great, that is a heterozygous capital T and a small letter T. For step number 3 on how to use a Punnett square, all you have to do is to draw a square, then cut it into four halves like this. For step number 4, all you have to do is to follow the baby steps that I am going to introduce. Inside the squares will be the genotypes of Harit and Nana's offspring. So, let us now begin. We have identified the parents as Harit and Nana. We also have identified their genotypes. Now, you will need to carefully follow the arrows and circles that I am going to flash on your screen. Harit's genotype will be placed on the top part of the square as shown by the arrow. Then, Nana's genotype will be placed on the left side of the square as shown by the arrow. Then, in each, every circle inside the square are the genotypes of their offsprings that we are going to solve. Here are now the baby steps on how to solve for an offspring's genotype inside the squares. By the way, the placing of appearance genotype on the squares will not affect the genotype of the offsprings. For example, if you place Harit's genotype on the left side and Nana's genotype on the top part of the square, the genotype of their offspring will not be changed. But, we usually place the mother's genotype on top and the father's genotype at the side. So let us begin. 
For the first of its field, this is what we are going to do in order to identify its genotype. So, watch the arrows carefully. Now, for the second offspring. Here's the third offspring. And now, here is the fourth. The genotype of the offspring is made or gathered from the genotype of their parents combined. If you have mastered step number 4, then let us now proceed to step number 5, identifying phenotypes. Based on step number 4, let us identify the appearances of Harry and Nana's kids or offsprings. This is the Bonnet Square from step number 4. And from that Bonnet Square, we can gather the following genotypes. We have two heterozygous, capital T, and a small letter T. Then, we have also two homozygous, small letter T. Then, from those genotypes, we will identify the phenotypes. The phenotype of a genotype, capital T, and a small letter T, which is heterozygous, is pink-coated. Then, the phenotype for the genotype homozygous T is white-coated. Those will be the appearances of Nana and Harriet's kids. Let me add this. We can describe phenotypes in three different ways. Number one is through counting. Number two is through percentage. And number three is by fractions. Let us have Harriet and Nana's kids to be described through counting. We can say that two are white-coated and two are pink-coated. Now, to describe it using percentage, we can say that 50% are white-coated and 50% are pink-coated. That will make a total of 100%. Now, if we are going to describe it by fraction, you are going to count the squares. We have 4 squares. So, 2 over 4 are pink-coated and 2 over 4 are white-coated. Then we can simply say that one half are white coated and one half are pink coated. That will make a whole if you combine the two. Let us now solve a problem using a Punnett square with pattern number one, incomplete inheritance or dominance. We have discussed in week number three that this type of pattern is showing blending phenotypes. Let us have this problem. What is the probability of pink flowers if pink flowers are bred with red flowers? I have identified the genotype of the parents. Above is the genotype of the first parent, a red flower. On the left side is the genotype of the second parent, a pink flower. Let us now identify the genotype of the offsprings. Ready? Now, do you get the same genotype as I did? Let us now describe the genotype by genotype. The first offspring's phenotype is that's right, a red flower. Then, the second offspring's phenotype will be another red flower. Great! The third offspring's phenotype will be a pink flower. Then, the fourth offspring's phenotype will be great, another pink flower. If we talk about probability, we are talking about percentage. So, we can say that there is a 50% chance of pink flowers. In order to learn it, you must do it yourself. So grab yourself a pen and a paper and let us solve using a finite square with pattern number 1 in complete dominance. The problem is, what is the probability of white flower if pink flowers are bred with pink flowers? You can post this video as you answer. You can go back to the steps. But, don't go forward. Are you ready? Let me flash my answer and you will compare your answer to mine. Here is my answer. Did we get the same genotypes? The same parent genotypes and the same offspring's genotypes? Did you have the 25% chance of probability of white flowers? If you do, then you got it right. 
you deserve this freedom. If you don't, you can always try again. Now, let us use the balance square in pattern number 2 called dominance. This is a type of pattern where two dominant states are showing together. This is the problem. What are all the possible phenotypes when two spotted cows are bred? In this type of problem, we will be describing phenotypes by counting. But before that, kindly take a look at the red arrow on the bottom part of your screen. This will help you easily identify the phenotypes and the genotypes of the cows. Now, let us place the genotype of the parents. This is the genotype of the first parent. And this is the genotype of the second parent. Let us now solve for the genotype of the offsprings. Ready? This is what I got. What is the phenotype of the first offspring? Very good, that is a black cow. What is the phenotype of the second offspring? Great, that is a spotted cow. Now, what is the phenotype of the third offspring? Very good, another spotted cow. Now, what is the phenotype of the fourth offspring? Wonderful, that is a white cow. Now, we can now describe the phenotype as one black cow, two spotted cows, and one white cow. Let us now solve this codominance problem with a pen and a paper using a finite sphere. Here is the problem. What are all the possible phenotypes when a spotted cow is spread with a black cow? Can you take a look at the red arrow on the top part of your screen as a reference for genotypes and phenotypes of the cows? Now, I will pause for a while as you answer. Again, no peeking. Okay, are you ready? Here are the genotypes of my parents, the black cow and the spotted cow. Now, here are the genotypes of their offsprings. Did we get the same answer? Now, here is the description of the phenotypes. We have two black cows and two spotted cows. If we have the same answer, then you deserve this prize. If you don't, you can always try again. This is a special topic about black typing. I hope that you have explored your activity sheet in week number 3 where the information about blood typing is listed. Now, let me simplify this slide. There are 4 different types of blood type. A, B, A, B, and O. Blood type A have 2 different kinds of genotype. Heterozygous A and homozygous A. Blood type B also have 2 different kinds of genotypes. Heterozygous B and homozygous B. That type AB has this genotype, IA, IB. And blood type O has this genotype, homozygous O. Let us now solve some blood typing problem using a Punnett square. I have posted the different genotypes for the different blood types as your reference. Now, here is the problem. If a woman with AB blood has children with a man with type O, what will be the possible genotypes of their children? What will be their blood types? Let us now solve using a finite square. Above is the genotype of the woman. On the side is the genotype of the man. The first offspring's genotype will be heterozygous A. The second offspring's genotype will be heterozygous B. The third offspring's genotype will be heterozygous A. Then, the fourth offspring's genotype will be heterozygous B. Now, the blood type of the first offspring is type A. The blood type of the second offspring is type B. The blood type of the third offspring is type A. And the blood type of the fourth offspring is type B. Try this blood typing problem using a Punnett square with your pen and paper. Here is the problem. A woman with type B blood has a child with type O blood. How is this possible if her husband has type A blood? 
Again, I will pause for a while and will wait for your answer. So be in. Are your answers ready? This question is a bit tricky. You need two sets of Punnett square in order to identify if a child with type O blood is possible when a woman with type B blood is mated with a male with type A blood. This is the first set of Punnett square. The genotype of the male is a homozygous A, then the genotype of the female is a homozygous B, and this is what I got for their offsprings. There is no type O blood if you are going to make a man with a homozygous A blood and a woman with a homozygous B blood. And this is my set 2 of my Punnett square. I have mated a male with a heterozygous A blood and a female with a heterozygous B blood. And these are the genotypes that I got. And there, you can see that the fourth offspring has a genotype of type O. So, if a heterozygous B male is mated with a heterozygous A female, you will have a possible offspring of a type O child. If you got that difficult blood typing problem right, then you really deserve this medal. And if you don't, you can always try again. Now, let us use the Punnett square in pattern number 5, sex link traits. We have discussed that sex link traits involve some X and some Y and some carriers. So, I decided to place the genotypes and the phenotypes of the female, the male, the carrier female, and the infected male just right here. Now, let us solve this problem. If a woman with a normal vision has children with a man who is colorblind, what are the chances that their children will be colorblind? Will any children be carriers of the trait? Here is the genotype of the man. The man is colorblind. Here is the genotype of the female. Now, what will be the genotype of their offsprings? Offspring number 1 is a carrier. Offspring number 2 is a normal male. Offspring number 3 is a female carrier. Then offspring number 4 is a normal male. In order to be a colorblind man, you must have this genotype. With your pen and paper, let us solve this sex link trait problem with the panel square. Here it is. If a carrier woman has a children with a man who is colorblind, what are the chances that their child will be colorblind? And will any of the children be carrier of the trait? So here is the genotype of the man. And here is the genotype of the female. Now let me pause for a while as you answer. Again, no peeking. Are you ready? Here are my answers. Here are the genotype of the offsprings. Did we get the same answer? The first offspring is a colorblind female. The second offspring is a colorblind man. The third offspring is a carrier female. And the fourth offspring is a colorblind female. Meal. If you got that right, then you earn this trophy. And if you don't, you can always try again. Let us now generalize our topic and check if you have learned something from this video lesson. For question number one, what is a pilot square? Your timer starts now. Good! I know you got that definition from your activity sheet week number 3. Panic square is mainly used to solve for genetic problems. 
or question number 2. How important are genotypes in solving genetic problems? The timer starts now. You got it right! Genotypes are traits to be written in the Punnett square. Genotypes will denote the phenotypes. After all the difficult problems that we have solved, you are now ready to answer your enrichment activities. Again, do not write anything on your activity sheets. Write your answer on a separate sheet of long pan paper. Here it is, enrichment activity number one. Solve these problems using a Punnett square. Those problems that you are going to solve involves the different patterns of bacterial inheritance. So, you can use the video tutorial on week number 3 as reference or you can also replay this video for reference on how to use a Punnett square and for the different rules that are set on the different patterns. Good luck! And to wrap everything up, let us answer these two remaining questions. At last, that's it for our video tutorial about the topic Problem Solving Involving Patterns of Non-Mendelian Inheritance. If you have any questions, you can replay this video or post your question in your science Facebook group. Do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell for more video tutorials like this. Thank you and see you on the next video.